Hello, my name is Kyle Brown and I'm a meteorologist at the National Weather Service in Northern Indiana. And I'm here to walk you through the thunderstorms, ingredients, and the life cycle. So we'll talk about what some of the things we need for thunderstorms are, and we will talk about the developing stage, the mature stage, and the dissipating stage of a thunderstorm. There's three key ingredients for a thunderstorm to occur in general, and that's gonna be moisture, a source of lift, as well as instability. Now, a severe thunderstorm is going to need one more additional ingredient, and that would be wind shear. So we'll be sure to cover those here coming up. First of all, with moisture, precipitable water, as shown on this image, is one way we can measure the amount of moisture within a column of the atmosphere. So you'll notice that the very dark green colors across northwest Indiana and spreading out into much of the Ohio River Valley has high values of precipitable water. So therefore, we have a high moisture content and we're able to check that box off of our ingredients list. One other way that we can monitor the amount of moisture in the atmosphere is through dew points. Typically, dew points in the 60s or 70s are needed within our area, but in the fall or in the spring months, a dew point as low as 50 or so uh, can also do the job. Instability typically comes in the form of the following cycle. The sun will heat the ground, which will naturally create a, create a warm environment, and that warm air naturally is going to want to rise. As it continues to rise, it can condense into a cloud. So it's this cycle that we have the solar radiation coming in, then we have the ground that's going to start to heat the air through conduction, and then warm air rises through convection. It's this cycle that, that are some of the early, very beginning stages of uh, thunderstorm development. We can also think of this concept when we consider a pot of boiling water on the stove. At first we have this cold water that's sitting at the bottom, it's very dense and cold, and then as that water warms it's going to rise to the top and we'll even get some, we'll get some bubbles and we'll get some steam going. It's the same kind of idea that's going on when we have the sun heating the ground and then the warm uh, moist air rising and condensing into a cloud. It's the same kind of concept as that pot of boiling water. Next, we need a source of lift or a trigger. Typically that can come in the form of a surface front, whether that's a stationary front or a warm front, but most oftentimes a cold front is going to do the trick. So in this case, we have a cold front extending from just about the arrowhead of Minnesota back towards northeastern Kansas into far northwest Missouri. So that's our cold front that would be of interest on this map. Taking a conceptual look at the cold front, because of that cold, dense air, it's just going to sink down to the bottom. It's going to force that warm air up and over the top. So a cold front is going to be one of our best sources of lift as far as thunderstorm development goes. Wind shear, when we talk about that, it's going to be how the wind direction or speed is going to change with height. The life cycle of a thunderstorm consists of three stages, and the whole cycle takes only about 30 minutes to complete. You'll first have the developing cumulus stage, then the mature cumulus stage. That's going to be kind of the heart, the meat of the thunderstorm. That's where all hazards are on the table, so to speak. And then lastly, you have the dissipating stage where the storm is finally coming down to an end. Within the first stage of the developing cumulus, it's all updraft. So you notice that the yellow, pick, the yellow arrows on the image is air rising up and it's creating a cloud. So we don't have what we call a downdraft, which would be air sinking out of, out of the storm. Everything, all the air is rising up and it is converging. So the arrows are coming together, that air is coming together. So up for updraft and then converging, the, the, the arrows are also coming together. There's no severe weather within the stage because once again, all the air is rising up. And then this first stage will last just about 10 minutes. What this looks like is it typically looks like a head of cauliflower. You'll notice in the picture that it does have the same texture as cauliflower. Lots of little uh, shooting spots coming out of the cloud. And then you'll kind of notice in the background, it's just kind of very smooth and flat. So you're not looking at that part, you're looking at the foreground where you have this cauliflower-like appearance. So when you see that, that's gonna be a thunderstorm that is getting its act together. It's just starting to develop and that's one that you'll want to monitor over the next several minutes. When we move on to the mature stage, now things are starting to get interesting. We have the updraft that has strengthened 
and we have the downdraft that's formed. So not only do we have those yellow arrows that are rising up and spreading out, but we also have a downdraft, so those arrows down and also spreading out. Now we have rain that's reaching the ground. We can have hail reaching the ground, because if you'll also notice in this picture, there's that pinkish orange or red zero degree Celsius line. So, and there's plenty of cloud that's colder than that zero degree Celsius cloud if you look from that zero sea line up towards the top. So, uh, we're below freezing, so certainly water droplets can freeze and we can start to get hail. So, we can also get hail out of that downdraft. Severe weather is most likely during the mature stage, which can last anywhere from about 10 to 20 minutes. In a picture, what you'll notice is um, not necessarily that cauliflower appearance, but you're going to have a much deeper volume, generally kind of a, a deeper or a taller cloud. And in this picture, you'll notice that there's some rain kind of in the center, maybe off to the right a little bit. You'll see that rainbow in there. So now we have the updraft and the downdraft working in this whole system within this whole thunderstorm during the mature stage, at which point we have all uh, severe weather hazards uh, on the table when we're at that mature stage. Lastly, the dissipating stage, you'll notice that compared to that very first image that we started with, you no longer have the, the, the up arrows. You no longer have that air rising up and condensing into the storm. Instead, you have the opposite. You have this, this cool air that's rushing down and out of the cloud. So you have a lot of the, a lot of the, the down arrows, so the air is spreading out and away. The, the bottom of the cloud is kind of evaporating. And, you know, at this point, the downdraft has cut off the updraft. There are still some severe weather threats with this, could still have some gusty winds, heavy rain is definitely on the table, and then lightning. Also, when we have this cold air shooting out from the, from the decaying thunderstorms, we can also get additional storms to develop along the gust front or the cold pool, and there's an example of that elsewhere in this training. The dissipating stage in picture, you'll notice that um, much like the preceding graphic, there is kind of this icy look, this thin look, um, kind of the edges, especially on the left middle of this image, it almost looks like the, the storm is fading away and that's exactly what's happening within this dissipating stage. Uh, if you were to continue this picture off to the right, you'd probably see maybe a developing cumulus or even the mature stage happening elsewhere. But the, the, the left portion of this picture, that's going to be the dissipating stage going on there. Let's get back to this idea of wind shear. On the left, we have this diagram depicting a straight up and down rain cloud. And the cloud is up and down because as the arrows indicate on the left, they're all, let's say, from the west, and they're all the same speed. So that cloud is going to be vertical and upright, done. But if we look at the image on the right, now we have lower wind speeds from the west happening at the bottom of the cloud, and then at the very top we have higher wind speeds also from the west. So now because of these changing wind speeds with height, we're able to get that updraft to tilt. So then we have the downdraft where the rain is happening out ahead of the updraft. And that's the signature of this sheared environment. Now, if we take this a step further and think about what those winds will be doing in, in a three-dimensional space, you can also start to get a rotation of the updraft. In this case, uh, kind of parallel to the screen, then going into the screen, if you think about the way those red out arrows are working. So with wind shear, things get a lot more interesting. We have the, the tilting of the updraft, and we can also get the rotation within the updraft. So that's all for this section of the Storm Spotter training. I hope that you enjoyed this section of the spotter training and that you will continue on to the other pieces of this presentation. Once again, my name is Kyle Brown, a meteorologist here at the National Weather Service in Northern Indiana, and I thank you for joining me.